Hello everyone, in this video we are going to take a look at Hyper-V Live migration and we are going to configure uh, our hosts for live migration and live migrate AVM all using PowerShell. Now, live migration as a concept means moving a running virtual machine from one Hyper-V server to another without shutting the virtual machine down. So really, while the machine is running and maybe doing what it needs to do, you decide that you want to move it to another server and you can, and you should have a minimal service disruption. Maybe you will lose one or two pings, but normally you should not sense that the machine uh, has been migrated from the service standpoint. In Hyper-V there are a couple of uh, live migration types and I want to cover them so you know exactly what to expect and uh, what to use. The first one and the most obvious one is the live migration in a failover cluster. When a couple of Hyper-V servers form a failover cluster, they will of course have a shared uh, storage. So this live migration is basically the easiest one because the virtual machine will be moved from one server to another, but the storage will remain on the shared path. So you will only be moving the virtual machine itself, the small files that form the VM, and the virtual machine state, meaning what is in the RAM memory. The next type is somewhat similar to the clustered uh, uh, scenario, and it is the live migration of a virtual machine that is stored in uh, an SMB share. So again, even though the Hyper-V servers are not part of a cluster, they have a shared storage in which the virtual machine is placed. So the only movement that will be done is the VM state. Next is live storage migration and this is uh, a little different. This is different in the sense that it's exactly the opposite of what we talked about uh, previously. In live storage migration, you have a virtual machine that has its files, for example, on a loon, on a SAN. You want to keep the virtual machine running on your Hyper-V host, but you want the storage of the VM to move to another loon, on another SAN maybe, so you can service that uh, SAN. You can do that while the machine is running and without any disruption. And the last type of live migration and the one that we will do in this video is shared nothing live migration. This means that you will live migrate a VM from one server to another with that and the VM does not have any shared storage between the server. So you will actually use the network to copy everything. The VM files, the hard disks and the VM state. And before we move on to the PowerShell part, uh, there are uh, a couple of improvements in Windows Server 2012 with regard to the speed of the live migration. The first one is live migration using compression, which means that before a machine is sent over the network, it will be compressed and then decompressed on the destination. This of course is faster, but at the same time will take a little more of your CPU of course, for the uh, compression and decompression. The second enhancement, and this is even faster, is live migration over SMB, which can use SMB multi-channel, and if available, it can also use RDMA, so SMB direct. This really is very fast, but you need to uh, take into account the fact that you cannot use uh, live migration with SMB and compression at the same time. You have to configure these things on the host and decide what you want for that Hyper-V host. So now that we talked about what live migration is, let's actually uh, see how we can configure it and use it with PowerShell. Uh, the first thing I want to do is create a, a virtual machine for testing on HV01. Let's connect to it with PowerShell Remoting.
and let's create our test machine if you have a test machine already you don't need to do this of course now the first thing that we have to do is configure the host for live migration and with set vm host we can first set the authentication type for live migration which for us can be Kerberos because we are in an uh, Active Directory environment and in uh, my case I also specify use any network for migration which is uh, in my case true but you can set it to false and use a specific uh, subnet to perform all the live migrations so to pass the traffic of the live migration to not share your uh, network card that also uh, has the traffic for the VMs for example and if you set this to false you can use this command to specify a specific subnet for live migration traffic another thing that you can set is the enhancement options that we talked about uh, in the slides and you can set either to use SMB for live migration use compression which is the default or use TCP IP which is the normal live migration without any enhancements actually I of course will not run any of these commands because compression is set by default so let's run on HVO1 the set VM host command and we have to also actually enable live migration we just set a couple of settings but we need to also enable it and we have to do the same on uh, HVS01, the other server. Let's set the settings and let's enable live migration. And uh, this uh, is all for configuring the actual host. Now we can also migrate the actual machine. But to do this, we have to actually log on on the Hyper-V host that has the machine, HV01. So let's copy this command. And I am now on HV01. And I will use this command to move this VM1 on HVS01. And using include storage means doing a shared nothing live migration. So uh, it will move the whole machine with everything. Now since the machine is not running it will not be very spectacular but uh, yeah it's finished of course for a running VM it will take a lot longer anyway if we now look on HVS1 we can see that this VM1 is there in the next video we are going to take a look at how to do a live migration without connecting directly to the host so using uh, the Hyper-V Manager or PowerShell Remoting, so stay tuned, like this video if you enjoyed it, also consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.